the real reviews let me tell you about planting arborvitaes if you're thinking about doing it watch this <music> So we just got 11 arborvitaes, part of the cedar family, installed, planted in our backyard. As you can see, they put mulch down to keep the moist soil, but there's some issues that you're going to see, like the shock, or it could possibly be underwatering. So we're going to kind of go over that and what we can do to fix that. So let's take a closer look right here. If you can see a little bit of that rust color, that yellowing, the biggest thing you have to worry about is when the whole tree actually becomes brown or rusts out. And there are a couple different things that you can do to stop that right away. So once you get arborvitaes, it's vital that you water them so they can root themselves. A lot of times they can form silica on the roots and that might take a little bit for it to come back but the biggest thing some of that rust or brown color after shock of planting can go away in about a year or two so let's kind of go over what i can do and what you can do to actually bring them back to life in that time period so one of the most important things to do to make sure your arborvitae stay alive they're very expensive and you don't want to be actually uh, changing them out every year from 50 to 200 dollars uh, for each depending on the height of them so what you want to do from the start from day two of the installation is make sure you have water and the most important thing is you can do, do two different things you can either take the water hose and spray each one at the center root for about um, a minute and a half, I would say, and do that every day for the first week. And then every other day, you can kind of move around with that and do it every other day, depending on rain. If it rains, you don't have to worry about that. Or you can get a soaker hose, wrap it around your arborvitae and keep it on for about 10 minutes a day for the first week. Uh, some people say the first month. So it's all depending on your arborvitae and how well they take to your soil and how well uh, your service or you planted them. If you guys are interested in different lawn products and service, you guys probably saw this one all over the internet. It's amazing. Five minutes online, they map out your house through GPS, they send you everything you need for your lawn, you send them a soil sample back and they formulate a plan for you. Professional services, organic mostly, uh, depending on some of their products that have herbicide, but all their lawn care is dog and kid friendly. So everything from the nitrogen for the green grass, the iron, even their soil that they can send you is all organic. And that's the Sunday Lawn Starter Kit. Please check out my other video. There's $40 link below off of your service and it's actually cheaper than the professional services. So if you see some of this browning or uh, yellowing going on in your arborvitae as you have them right now, this just got planted and uh, it's been around a week now and I wanted to give you an update on it and show you how it's going and what you need to do. The most important thing is arborvitaes need sunlight. As you can see here, they all have sunlight so they are not dying or they're not in shock because of that because you can see they have that there. There is no white splashes. Make sure you really look at your arborvitae and check if there's white splotches uh, on them. That is disease and can cause them to die. And also insect issue. If you guys see any insects uh, crowding around or anything on your arborvitae, make sure that that could be an issue that's caused by it. Another thing is shock. This is what I'm predicting that the issue is here. So the shock has that brown or rusting right there and that can be all because of the replanting. You planted it too low or high above the soil line where it was uh, growing and that will go away within a year or two as I said before. Another thing uh, is not enough water. So make sure if your root and mulch is dry make sure you give it water every other day or every day the first week unless you're using 
different types of methods of watering that can create a longer process as well. But today we're gonna go over how we can fertilize it. You wanna do it twice a season or all season long just to make sure it becomes lush, the shock goes away, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So if you just got evergreen planted, it's important that you get fertilizer. If they didn't fertilize it, I don't think uh, when they install these, they fertilize the soil, and that's why the shock, and it's not getting enough nutrients as needed. I'm watering it, but it's not getting enough nutrients. So I bought the Vigoro Evergreen and Holly. It makes lush green, and as well as helps prevent shock or if it did get a little bit shocked after transplant uh, from where it was grown. So if you can see here, there's about 15 spikes. Let me show you how to install it. And then I'm gonna do a video about 30 days after to show you how it worked. So please subscribe guys, please give me a thumbs up and let's go through the process, let's open it up. So here's the Vigoro Evergreen and Holly fertilizer spikes. Um, so basically for the Evergreen and Holly, they're more specialized to that breed of um, arborvitae and bush and different types of uh, improving stress tolerances for that type of breed of uh, plant. And the biggest thing that's important about these is that you fertilize. They say do it in spring and fall. Um, what I'm doing right now, it's right between August, September, and I just got them installed. I need to fertilize them. They're gonna last about three months. You can do them all season long. This reduces the stress. How they come, there's 15 of them. They come just like this. Make sure when you put them in, they're about at a 45 degree angle. They give you this plastic cap right here. All you need is a hammer to kind of put it in. We're gonna kind of go over that process once I get by the evergreens over there. And with this process, you wanna do it at the drip line, but if the drip line and your evergreens are smaller, you wanna do it about five inches away from that. And basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing it right in the centers of it. And let's kinda of go over there and we'll go through that process right now. So it's really important to kind of know where I'm gonna put it in. And wherever you put these spikes in, that's where the roots are gonna to grow towards to get those nutrients. So once you put these in, it's very important to space them out properly. The drip line is about, um, I would say about four or five inches. I'm gonna do it one right there in the center. I'm gonna do one right there in the center. So I'm gonna space them out in the centers of each of them. So basically, what's gonna happen is when the roots grow, they're gonna grow right towards those nutrients and that fertilizer, and that's what makes them grow. So it makes the roots actually expand out and make sure you space it out. You don't want too much fertilizer and you wanna put it in right. So kind of let me show you what I'm gonna do from the start. So I took a little bit of that mulch off to get to the soft soil right there, and I'm about I would say 15 inches away from each tree, maybe a little bit less. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in sideways like this, about 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna hammer down on it until I can remove that cap. I'm gonna do that all around to all the different areas. And when I'm done, I'm gonna show you how it looks. Just cover up the mulch, and then I'll go over that process. So if you can see where the mulch is, I did it right to the line. I took it down, very easy process to take it down. And then I took the back of the hammer and pulled out the pushing tip. So once that is in, you can see I covered up with mulch. Um, and this process I did at this level currently, I did six of them right in the center of all the arborvitaes. And you can see that you can't even see any of them. So if you have any pets or anything, you cover it up with mulch and there is no worries. At around five, six, five o'clock, I will water them just so they and the fertilizer starts moving through the soil system and into the roots. And we're gonna do a review after about 30 days just to see if it helped. It made the foliage a little bit more greener and help with the shock. The shock usually goes away within a year. You can also trim off these different foliage. And if you can see right there, make sure when you trim it off, you trim it off at an angle and just 
take uh, scissors or garden scissors and just cut it off at an angle, you can see the little V's everywhere down. Very easy to do and you won't spot that anymore. So let's hope all these go away in the centers because you really don't want to be changing these out every year and make sure that they fertilize them when they put them in. So when they put that in, they did not. So that's why I'm throwing the fertilizer right now, which is end of August, September. On another note, so if you do find these at Home Depot or online off season, they're about eight to $15. You could probably find them on sale for 15 bucks off season. You can keep these for a couple seasons. No worries, put them in your shed and they'll be just fine. So let's look how this works after 30 days. Please subscribe, please give me a like. Um, if you do like lawn service, please check out Sunday. I have a link on the bottom, $40 off. You probably heard of them. Great site and great fertilizer. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, till next time.